Let's pick things up there with tonight's Political Insider. Joining me, Dave Leventhal, senior political reporter at the Center for Public Integrity. Dave, let's start with the delegate counts. On the left, Hillary Clinton holds a commanding lead over Bernie Sanders. She has more than 1,000 pledged delegates and superdelegates. That's more than double what Sanders has. They need nearly 2,400 to secure the nomination. On the right, the race is tighter. Donald Trump leads the pack with 319 delegates. Ted Cruz isn't far behind, but they need more than 1,200 to secure the nomination. Now, this is a real dilemma for the Republican establishment. Do they line up behind a candidate they can't contain in Trump, a candidate they don't like in Cruz, pursue a brokered convention, or create an entirely new party? What happens here? <laughs> well, Morris, we're not entering the age of impossibility for Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz to still emerge and go neck and neck with Donald Trump, although he's leading right now. But it's becoming more and more improbable that that's going to be the case. Donald Trump is, is having incredible success. He won Super Tuesday, even though he didn't win all of the races. And he's marching forward into a bunch of states where he's doing incredibly well in the polls. So, hey, if you're a soccer fan, sometimes you know that a team, if it's a, an underdog and it's is trailing behind. They're not playing for the win, they're playing for the tie. And on the Republican side, you may see that eventually, where the Republican candidates whose name are not Donald Trump are going to go try to make this a brokered convention. They're going to stick in, they're going to keep going forward and uh, try to play this out in July as opposed to now and just prevent Donald Trump from getting enough delegates to ultimately wrap up the nomination prior to the convention. Meanwhile, the money continues to flow. You report candidates and their allied groups have collectively spent more than $700 million. Is this campaign still on track to break campaign spending records? Easily. This will be the most expensive political election in U.S. history, bar none. And we say this every cycle. We said it in 2012. We it's said it crazy. in 2008. But this is going to be a little bit different or a lot bit different in the end, uh, simply because of the role that many of these outside organizations are playing. Super PACs, nonprofit organizations. Super PACs have really been the story, uh, both on the Democratic and especially the Republican side during the primary season, spending tens upon tens and tens of millions of dollars in uh, what effectively is a civil war, but also to lobbying uh, barbs uh, in, in uh, firepower across uh, the aisle from Democrat to Republican. That is just going to not only continue, but also ramp up as we get closer and closer to Election Day. The money doesn't always work. Look at Jeb Bush and all the money he Without raised. question. All right, let's talk about strategy. Clinton holds a significant lead in cash on hand among all candidates with more than $78 million. Cruz is a distant second with less than 40 million, but they're in very different places right now. Can Clinton afford to let off the gas and stockpile cash for the general election? She can't, Morris, and here's why. Bernie Sanders is uh, not in a great place right now. Hillary Clinton has secured not quite half of the delegates that she needs to go ahead and ultimately secure the nomination before the convention in July. But Bernie Sanders is raising a heck of a lot of money in February alone. His campaign is reporting that it raised about $40 million. He's showing no signs at this point of getting out of the race, whereas on the Republican side, we still have candidates dropping out. News today that Ben Carson is likely to drop out later this week. So Bernie Sanders remains a problem for Hillary Clinton, even if he isn't as big a problem as he might have been a couple of weeks ago when uh, the contests uh, were just getting started. And how does Donald Trump's personal wealth factor in? It factors into an incredible degree. Number one, Donald Trump hasn't had to spend as much money as the other candidates on the Republican side because he has 100% name recognition. Who doesn't yeah. know who Donald Trump is? Right. And he also has been able to benefit from a great deal of what we like to call earned media, where he's going on national cable television and appearing on shows. He hosted Saturday Night Live, all of these right. things that have been to his benefit and haven't cost him really a dime. So the fact that he has still waiting in the wings unlimited amounts of money to bring to bear is a huge issue. And also, too, he likes to say, Donald Trump, that is, that I'm self-funding my campaign. That is true to an extent, but he's also raised millions upon millions of dollars from people who are, are you know, just average Americans or business people who have said, all right, you know, guy's a billionaire, that's fine and good, but I'm still going to write a check and give him some money. Dave, let's talk election integrity. You met Thomas Hicks, the chairman of the Election Assistant Commission. Tell us about him. 
We sat down for uh, an hour in his office. He's a new chairperson of the Election Assistance Commission, which is a very, very little known commission here uh, in Washington, D.C., technically in Silver Spring, Maryland, uh -huh. and uh, but it could play a outsized role in 2016. Uh, the short history in, 20, uh, in 2002, President Bush signed into law uh, the Election Assistance Commission and created it in the aftermath of all the voting problems that we had back in the 2000 Bush v. Gore election. It was supposed to set up as an organization, an agency to make sure that elections were free and fair and also free of anomalies like we had in 2000. It's an agency, however, that has been underfunded, hasn't really uh, made its mark in a major way, but uh, Hicks says that in 2016, He's really going to be looking out for issues such as voter rights and accessibility issues and making sure that people who want to vote, who want to exercise their right to do so, have the ability and have the means to do it in a way where they're not turned away from the polls either by force uh, or uh, more likely uh, just by the inconvenience of the act of voting. Well, he's going to have a busy year. Sure Dave is. Leventhal, senior political reporter at the Center for Public Integrity. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome, Morris. Thank you.